So let's go to the root 53 console. And as we can see here, that's a scalable DNS. So root 53 is a global uh, service. It does not require any region selection. And then when you go to hosted zones, currently if it's a new AWS account for you, you'll see nothing. But for me, I already bought a purchase and domain name and created a hosted zone from it. So we see stefan.shear.com. So let's go ahead and say we have nothing in it. What you want to do is to purchase a domain. So for this, you go to register domains and click on register domain. And here you're able to choose a domain name. So say whatever you want as a domain name.com. Hopefully that's available. And it's available. So, okay, I $12 per year. So just know that it's going to be uh, pricey. Then you add to cart, you say register for one year, you scroll down, say continue. Then you put on all your information and you should enable privacy protection just to make sure that no one can know what's your personal details. So you click on enable here, which is by default. Finally, you check your contact details, you check the terms and conditions and say, I agree. And then finally, you click on complete purchase and it will go ahead and actually do the purchase. Now I'm not going to do it because I already have a domain name. Then it'll take about maybe an hour to get ready and then you can follow me along in this class. After doing the request, it will be in pending request and you'll see it and you can see the status, you'll receive some emails. And then when you're all done, it will be under registered domain and you'll see the expiration dates, whether or not there's auto renew on, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so then you go to hosted zone and automatically because you purchased a domain through Route 53, then a hosted zone will be created for you. And we can go ahead and click on it and start creating some records. So currently I do have some records created for some of my applications, but don't worry about it. Right now you should only have two records. And so what we'll do is that we'll create a record set and we'll create just a random record set. We'll call it my first record. And then we'll say a IPv4 address and I'll say the value will be 11.22.33.44. Just a very simple uh, DNS record right here and click on create. And here we go, it's been created. And so now basically, if I go on the internet and look for this URL, myfirstrecord.stefanatisher.com, I will be redirected in the back end to this URL 11.22.33.44, this IPv4 address. Now, obviously, because I don't have any servers at this address or anything like that, it will not work, but you get the idea of how these things work. Now, how do we verify programmatically that the DNS record of this thing actually points to this IP is what I want to show you right now. So for this, we will go to the command line. And if you're on Windows, it's called NSLOOKUP and you type the domain name. So my domain name here was myfirstrecord.stefantheteacher.com. So let's do it. Myfirstrecord.stefantheteacher.com. And this will give you something like this on Windows. So it tells you that my first record that's .com resolves to 11.22.33.44, which is excellent. And if you're on Mac, and I'll use this because I'm on Mac and I'm more familiar with the dig command, you type dig and then my first record .com, And it gives you something similar, just a little bit more information. So here we see from the answer section that my first record .com is the same 11.22.33.44. So you're free to use whatever command you want. If you're on Windows, NSLOOKUP, if you're on Mac, Linux, use dig. It's whatever you want, really. I like dig, so I'll just follow along with dig, but you're free to just use whatever you want. So this is how we check, you know, that a DNS record works. Obviously, we haven't achieved much here. We just created a record pointing to an IP that we don't control, so there's not much going on. But we'll see in this lecture how we can make things interesting with a uh, Route 53 DNS and some applications running in the background. So see you in the next lecture.